What's up, everybody? It's the Poor Leah Dude Podcast, the show where we put a spotlight on the greatest minds we can find. Uh, my name's Emrys Farrow, and I've got... Who else do I have here with me today? I'm Chandler Davis. I'm Patrick uh, Lilly. Uh, my name is Zach. <laughs> and uh, uh, today, <laughs> today, we're honored and very proud, uh, to have this guest on today who has... Uh, come on today and decided that this is going to be her first interview with the Permitted Podcast, her first interview. Uh, big mistake, but we're still very happy to have you here. She's personally <laughs> responsible for two of my favorite concerts I've ever been to. Yes. Oh, look at yes. that. That's nice. Yes. No, for, yeah, this was our guest. to come anyway, so no, just get <laughs> Am I sensing a fruit is fine? It's dry. <laughs> no, so, so I appreciate ours. that, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so our guest is Brianna Glaros Leon, aka Big Bad Brond. But I think we can call you Brond if that's cool. You can call me the the lead female vocalist of Just Friends. How are you? Thank you for coming in. We heard you've been making candles during this quarantine. Yeah. I have. Yeah. So um, the the day that I the day after I came back from tour after it got canceled and we did that like long drive back. Um, that next day it was announced that there was going to be, you know, the, what is it called? Um, shelter in place. Yeah. So I freaked out and I ran to Michael's and I bought a bunch of like fucking <laughs> candle making stuff and <laughs> made candles. Okay. That's great that you have the foresight ahead of time to be like, I'm going to have a lot of free time. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go crazy if yeah. I don't have something to do. So I think a lot of people were blindsided by that. We didn't plan ahead at all. We were very blindsided. I think we were still on a high from having an amazing time at your concert. That we yeah. Were and didn't expect this to happen at all. Yeah. Yeah. And, <sighs> and it feels like, as we said, it feels like it was so long ago that that even happened. And what, what actually was it? Was it, it was the week before my birthday, so like March 12th or something, something like that. It was, that was, it, was just two and a half, it was about two and a half months ago. Feels like a lifetime ago with everything that happened. Uh, but meeting you was the most incredible experience ever. Like, it just doesn't feel real like the time we come together. And we're very grateful for it, getting to hang out with you and go to Federal Donuts and, uh, and uh, awesome. spend the day interviewing you and Sam class. Thank you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, and that day, that was Philly. Right? Yeah, it was Philly. We were in Philly. That was the 11th, I think, March 11th. Yeah, I that think was that's really cool. cool. Um, I really enjoyed like being out there with you guys. I shit you not, I like snuck in there for sure. See, I'm <laughs> like, I'm gonna have to interview um so guys later, and I'm like, oh, interview, huh? Um, can I- <laughs> And he was like, well, it's donuts. And I was like, oh, donuts, huh? And like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm so, so glad you did, though. Yeah. With, oh, yeah, it was so worth the donuts and the sandwich, though. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. I had a great time with you guys and those federal donuts, the lavender strawberry ones. Those were oh, yeah. to die for. Dude, the no red bread. The chicken sandwich was just epic. Yeah, really top tier. It, yeah. You know, I was nervous enough though, where I I took a couple bites and I like I didn't I couldn't eat anymore. Do you guys get that? You get nervous. Yeah. yeah. They used to have me yeah. a lot when I was younger. It was a yeah. Yeah. It helped I me stay skinny, but uh. Food. Yeah, the t- <laughs> donuts were too good not to eat. There's no reason to be nervous around us ever. I don't know. Or the concert that night might have been probably a oh. bigger deal than we were. We're we're way more nervous than anyone else in those yeah. situations for sure. Would well, you say yeah. that you don't get nervous to perform anymore? That's such a funny um I was thinking that just now. So no, I don't. <laughs> I get nervous to talk to people, but I think I was gosh, I was doing some like open mics, um, maybe five years ago or something i i didn't know the guys yet and um it occurred to me that you know i had a performance and it went really poorly in my opinion i was like that was absolute shit and i was like okay 
finish strong, whatever, hit the last note, whatever. And um, and people clapped. And then that the rest of the night, like people, it was just like a little pub, mind you. But all these people were like, that was so good. Like, oh my gosh, girl. And I was like, okay, so then people are going to clap no matter what. And so that day I was like, well, fuck it. I don't need to be nervous because people are just going to. I don't know if they were lying to me or if they were just like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but either think, way. All the open mics I've been to, I feel like it's more like just getting up there is the biggest thing. Like just having like the, the yeah. balls to actually get up and perform is the coolest part. Oh, yeah. And I did not have like the, the performing ship at the time or mm-hmm. whatever. But the way I think about it now is um, it's just like really fun to step on stage and... I was nervous, you know, when I was first playing with just friends, mostly about what people like, if people are going to be, um, I guess, accepting of me because it was such a, you know, it's such a male dominated world Mm -hmm. and I haven't grown up playing music my whole life and I didn't know what to expect. You know, it's like I walk into a room full of white dudes, I'm Mexican and like, I was like, I don't, I don't know about this, Um, but I... Yeah, it was cool. I don't know if I'm talking too much now. No, no, I, no, 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 no. Your your perspective is so unique uh, in reference to that scene in that community because you're right. Like it, you know, people like you are not so common, and for you to have been so uh, openly accepted by everyone, I think is awesome. And yeah. everybody loves you. It, the band would not be the same without you, and you bring something unique to that band to the that entire scene by your involvement you know Thank yeah you. absolutely and just seeing you perform like i i've been a fan of music for a while but i hadn't really uh watched a lot of the the live uh the live music and just actually being there and getting to see that i mean some nights i mean sometimes i feel like we all feel like we're not performing at our best but just the energy that you give is just unparalleled. Like I've never seen that type of energy and that type of, uh, that type of connection, um, with anyone else. Like the way that you perform with Sam, with your entire band, I think that can make up for any tiny little missteps that you notice that other people don't notice, but it's really just like that energy that you're giving is amazing. And I think it's because you're unique in so many different ways that it just puts something on that I don't think, uh, you could ever be replaceable in that in that scene and in that group. in the, the scene thank you both of you that's like really high compliments um it's a really interesting thing to hear i think from you guys and, and the way that you talk about the scene as a whole and um i just want to say about the energy um what you're saying is i mean I take my credit like yes bitch but <laughs> Uh, I think <laughs> a lot of what you're seeing is um, it's like the friendship that I have mm-hmm. with the people that I'm playing with. Sam and I are super close. We're best bitches. Like we really <laughs> understand each other and we, the band and I have gone kind of through it in our own way because um, just kind of the way that I, I grew up, I was very reserved and mistrusting of people. Um, And so I'm I'm that person that has like one friend, you know, and they don't really like other people. And and friendly enough, of course, like I try to not be um, rude or anything. That's not my intent. But for the most part, I've noticed um, that I shy away from like really getting to know I mean, we can get into my fucking, you know, psychology all we want. But uh, what I'm trying to say is, like, I learned how to be, um, I don't know, connected to people and just friends. Like, we, and it really, like, you know, people that learn by getting punched in the face? Mm -hmm. I'm one of those people, you know? So it was really... I learned through like arguments. I learned through um, just like, well, oh my gosh. So there's this moment that is really important to me. And I think about it all the time. It was 
January of 2018, 2019. And um, we went to Europe and I was having a really crummy time because I was having some personal issues, like a falling out with a, a really close friend, like my one friend. We were not friends anymore. And I was just like in this bubble of just like, you know, rage and like not not being my actions were not reflective of the person that I think I am. You know, I hold myself to be like, I mean, my integrity is somebody that's kind and like caring for others. And my actions were not reflecting that. And I was aware of it at the time. And I really like put them through a lot of shit and touring is really rough. And that tour was probably the roughest tour that we've been on. Um, it was super cold and really demanding and everybody was like, you know, we're do we're surviving basically. And so to have that on top of everything was probably rough. I mean, I was having a hard time too. And, um, we came back and I was kind of like, I was hanging out with Sam, maybe like a month later or something we were talking and he, I was I was like, yeah, I, I guess I wasn't like, you know, the friendliest during that that tour. And he was like, yeah, well, people are really upset with you. And that really stuck with me because I remember that everybody had been so kind to me. I could tell that they were upset with me and here and there. But, you know, I wasn't worried about it because I was struggling in my own head. But I thought about that and I was like, wow, like these people were probably really fucking sick of me at the time. And they still showed me friendship and they still showed me kindness. They still helped me like carry my shit around because that's all they do. <laughs> like carry my bag. I'm always like, please, bring so much stuff. I'm the first moon, what can I say? But, <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I really, um, I had such a period of change follow that and it kind of revolved around that as like wow these people like really showed me kindness when I wasn't really giving it back to them and that's when I felt like I could really trust them and that I wanted to be a better friend to them and a better person and honestly we're all tight as like little I don't know peas in the pod oh my god this is a spider on my tripod Holy oh, shit. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, dude. We gotta call it. <laughs> That's it. Just the camera. But, yeah, I think what you're seeing on stage, at least from me, is like how how much love I have for those people and how much I enjoy like doing that with them, having fun. Um and I think that's really the most irreplaceableness of just friends is like, it's kind of ironic. I don't know why the name the band that, but <laughs> I wasn't there. Um, mm -hmm. But, and I'm sure they've talked about it and I forgot because I'm fucking rude, but <laughs> it really is like just friends. Like we're such good friends and I did not, I always wanted that, but I'd never really encountered it. I'd never encountered like a community, you know, that took mm -hmm. me in. and I felt part of, and um, I found that with them. So that's really what you're seeing from me on stage. It also, also whenever I watch, so much, uh, what? <laughs> so whenever I watch, it seems like it doesn't matter how many people are in the crowd. It's like you guys are just mm -hmm. doing it because it's because it's fucking sweet, and you want to. <laughs> on real like sometimes it matters but like we've had some some real bad shows and before i joined they had even worse ones but you're right like at some point i remember at some show we were just like we're still doing this like call it practice call it just for fun like we're gonna make these three people dance like <laughs> fuck it you know but yeah it's it's very um uh, very beautiful Yeah, I, I just, I love all this honesty. Like, I love how honest you are. And you talk about, uh, you, you're just so honest in Casa 22. And I, I love your podcast and I listen to it. We can talk about that in a bit. But I just really like that. And as a person that's uh, 
gone through that where it's just like you're with your friends and you're not always in the right and you mess up and like all the amazing people we have on our team and I've been that person where I've just made mistakes and not been the best friend sometimes but everyone's still been there for me and I feel like I get stronger sometimes and everyone's making fun of me but I just I'm just being honest and like I think you can see that not just on stage although it really shows on stage the chemistry you guys have and all that you guys have been through and how much you guys just genuinely like being together but you can see that online and you can see that just in the way you guys interact that you don't just spend your time together when you're on stage and when you have to but you really do Mm -hmm. spend your time together not because you're required to but because you love each other and you spend your time at home and the life that you guys have built together on tour and the way you guys have been able to uh, navigate and manage being a family in such closed, like in such close quarters is very impressive. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard, man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's really rare to, um, what's that? I'm sorry. I, you're cutting out a lot on my end. So I there's know, there, there's a delay because of the across the country factor. But yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're working I, with it. We're working with it. We're all good. I was going to say it's really rare that you see that kind of thing um, translate onto stage. But when you when it does, it's really cool. And it's it's like a completely different experience almost. To what you said, to what you said before you kind of cut out there, uh, I've been mm-hmm. to many different concerts at different levels. And I've seen some incredible performers and incredible actors and it's like they get up there and they're they're giving they're giving good energy and they are um really talented and you can just and you're really vibing with it but you can tell it's just really a shtick that is very much just acting and they're very much going through the motion and everyone has their routine when they're on stage everyone has like the routine that they do but it's just different when you watch uh your band perform when you watch your friends perform perform it seems very much like you're you're very in the moment and present and you don't often get that when you see performers uh live yeah i dig that where were we i apologize for the technical difficulties i'm sorry if it's causing any frustration on your end hey, I'll, um, I'll, ki- I'll kick start it again just friends <laughs> fucking honestly no. probably best stage performance i've ever seen in my life mm-hmm. here we go Thank and it was you. and it was lit seeing Sam just fucking dance around with a, eating a chicken sandwich in Philly. I'm like, wow, this isn't different than on stage. He's just lower to the ground. <laughs> yeah, whatever he feels passionate about something. Yeah, sandwiches, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I respect it. He's passionate about chicken sandwiches for sure. <laughs> that's the, that's the correct stance. He's such a foodie, like, but he he doesn't talk about it like in a blog, or he's not like, yeah, it's like Samuel Kles, twenty six, you know, just like Cali. He just like, loves food, and that's it. And he doesn't. And I didn't realize he was a foodie. I'm just like, yeah, he does know all his chicken wings. He does know all his you know, places around. The he has spots around the country. He's like, we have to go there every time that's we're on tour. So like, cool. Yeah, when when we were like talking, we were like, oh, "When should we get together?" And I was like, "Do you have any ideas or anything?" And he immediately was like, "Here's my list of places I know in this in every single city. I have a go to spot. I'm ready." It's kind of like in every single city they have like a safe place they can go to in case of an emergency. But he yeah. has the safe places to eat in case of an emergency. Like he knows exactly where to get the right food at the right time. And, he, and even when we were like walking around Philly, like going to get those sandwiches, he was like. He was like, I know this place and I know this place and I know the guys that work in this kitchen. And I'm like, guys, yes. hook up with food in every single city you go to. <laughs> he does. All right. Well, um, enough about okay. Sam. He's got his own episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned, <laughs> you mentioned, what? <laughs> uh, you mentioned that you didn't start music like at that young of an age right Mm -hmm. no i didn't um i started playing music well i think like any angsty loner girl i definitely got a guitar you know i bought one when i was like 
17 and had some money and I, I just like try to do the, the thing and I tried learning. Well, no, I played guitar for a minute, um, but just sporadically through my life because I, I didn't have other people to play with in my family. Um, there's no musicians in my family. My grandpa likes to sing when he's drunk and that's about it. <laughs> but he's a great singer. And he's beautiful. <laughs> Um, and so, um, being immigrants, we're not really like at the recreational mm -hmm. exactly level yet. So I did not play with other people until I was, um, in college. I joined like a, a theory class. Um, I was studying psychology and there was, um, theory 101 fulfilled, you know, one of my requirements or whatever. And I was like, Oh yeah, I'm gonna take music. Like I love music. I've been trying to play the guitar, so maybe this will help me. I took some guitar classes too. Honestly, I was really stoked to be in college because I was like, I can take whatever classes I want, and I'm gonna take like three music classes. And um, I went to like some music department meeting that was mandatory, and I was like, cool, it's mandatory. And I showed up, and there was like nobody there. <laughs> But I ran into somebody I knew, and they were like, hey, you should come to the combo class, which is a, a jazz rock combo. You know, a bunch of people get in a room, and they play music super awkwardly um, and have, like, a really weird show at the end of the <laughs> And I did that for a couple years. Wow. But that first semester is where I met my first band, and they're called Sweet Peaches. And, um, I was like, I was dating the guitarist, like, you know, I was like, yeah, I'm in a band with my boyfriend and that was my whole thing, you know, I was just there to like, I mean, I love to sing for sure. And I'm definitely a ham. I won't lie to you there, but I was like there to kick it with my boo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I was like singing and a boyfriend, like, fuck yeah, I'll do mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and that boyfriend was really, really into Just Friends. He was like a big fan. He went on tour with them to fill in for guitar like twice. Um, and he introduced me to them. Sam and I, I think we told you already, but we used to hate each other for a moment. Because that boyfriend's friend and I and Sam and like whatever, there was just like beef. It was useless fucking baby beef, but whatever. <laughs> you know the baby beef? You yeah. <laughs> it's like pointless because kids need drunk with their lives. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so Sam and I, we got turned against each other before we even got to know each other. And it was just like easy to be like, fuck that dude. And he was like, fuck her. And we're like, fuck him. And, um, and I was with that band for a while. It was like kind of a weird dynamic. I was still having a lot of fun, but there was a weird dynamic because, you know, the people dating each other. And then uh, I then X moved away. So obviously the band, well, we replaced him actually, but I wasn't having, I didn't have the like connection to those people that I had just friends. And I felt like, kind of judged honestly I felt judged and I felt um ostracized and, but I love music so much I like stayed with them and I remember I drive up to practice and we practiced every week and like really did not get any better just, I don't know if you know this just friends practices for like two days because we all live in different states and shit mm -hmm. we all mm -hmm. Play for like a day, maybe two, and then hit the road, and then that's fucking magic. Seriously, but, that's crazy. Um, Wait, so that means God. the show we saw that was the first show of the tour, right? So that was yeah. like one day of oh. practice in. That was practice essentially. Um, <laughs> we practiced, yeah. I think we practiced like a day, maybe two before that show. Holy um, shit, that's crazy. Wow. Oh, you know what? And I flew in, so. I wasn't even part of the practice now that I think about it. But the cool thing about that show is um, noticeably, I felt like I was like a little literally, oh my God, this is so crazy to say, but I felt like a little fish, like getting back in its own water, you know, mm. it's like, you know, uh, you're yeah. what it's like, and that show really left an impact on me too, to be honest, that Philly show. Um, it felt unreal and I was like wow this tour is going to be the best tour I've been on and then the next day the whole thing got yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so bad. but it was the best tour that I've been 
be honest, like those two really? performances were good for me. Yeah. Wow. How did awesome. how did that decision get made to that you had to like cancel it? Was it like from you guys or was it like we we can't continue like someone's telling us we can't continue? No. <laughs> no, so the way that happened was um we started hearing about the like gathering bands. Mm-hmm. So we got to the venue in DC and we unloaded and then we got together and was like, we don't know what the week is going to look like because there's talk about bands. So we might just have to, um, lay at Corey's house from P daddy, mm-hmm. lay at his house for like a week and then move on to the next shows. And then a couple hours later we were talking about, um, if we should just, or there were more vans, so updated information, and then our conversation turned into, should we just head to um, a cabin that is uh, Chris's uncle's cabin in Denver? Super cool cabin. We love it there. Um, should we just head straight there and then pick up the tour of the second half? And then by the time we were playing, uh I think, or by the time we were done playing, one of the two, I don't even remember, that day was so hazy, so stressful. Um, at, basically, by the end of the night, we, we knew the whole tour was going to get canceled, and we didn't know if we should wait it out or try to pick up some shows with Grad Life or try to drive home. And also, Trump was talking about using the National Guard to, like, block barricade um california so we were like should we try to head home because are we going to be locked out or what do we do i'm glad we chose to drive home it took us three full days like day and night we drove in the van and honestly like the shock didn't hit me until i was home i'd been home for like a week or something i don't know what's going on (laughs) that's so weird i'm sorry i'm getting frustrated on your behalf like i feel bad i just just want to hear what you're saying (laughs) i just want to hear (laughs) i'm interested you're the only one Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. away from the story you know (laughs) i know that's yeah exactly all right we can hear you as of right now go ahead (laughs) Dodie. Well, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> that that's that's crazy that that all happened in such a short span of time. That the yeah. situation was developing. That I mean, on our from our perspective, it was very similar around the day where we had to decide all of that too for ourselves and what we had going on. It was like twenty four hours. It was like the world, your entire world just kind of got turned on its head in a span of like a day, you know, and you wake up the next day and you're just like, what happened? Like, where are we? You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It was insane. It took a while for me to settle for, for it to settle mm-hmm. me that I'm one of those people that like lost their job because of COVID. Um, because for me, I was, I was thinking more about, other people and like people in in worse situations. Honestly, I'm always thinking about immigrants Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like how this might affect my family or people like my family or, um, I mean, you know, there's a really strong like anti-Mexican sentiment flying around the U S so that's always where my first, um, thought goes. And I don't, I don't know if this is brave or stupid, but I don't usually feel like a victim anymore. I just kind of feel like, oh, my God, what do we do? Like, what's going on? You know, so I didn't realize that I'd been I'd been suffering, you know, the mm-hmm. effects. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But. I'm um, important because I really felt like absolute shit after a while. Once it hit me, I was like, I've been honestly the last two ish months. I have my podcast, I have music to work on, but I feel really directionless in a way, you know, and Mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way right now. Let's see who's at the door. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) 
Hi. Who it is? What's up, Sam? Yo. Yo. What's up? Yo. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, what's up, hey, Joel? What's up, Joel? Usual podcast business. No, then I asked John, like, sure, and I was like, yeah, fucking trainer. <laughs> Make yourselves at home. What was that? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's all no, good. It's, no. it's, it's, it's yeah, no, it's very, yeah. It's very common when all your favorite yeah. bands just like walk in, like on the <laughs> show you're doing, just like <laughs> and make an appearance on your podcast. You yeah, know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god, dude, where were we? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, when we're, so yeah, we can hear. So you were saying that you feel like you have your, your music and your podcast, but you still feel kind of directionless and that's hard. And, and like, I think we, we get that. And as artists and creators doing the things that is not considered at this time essential is like very difficult because to you, and I know it's different. I know there's like, there's, there's people out there that are doing very kind of life saving precautionary measures and, and we're very grateful for those things, but it feels like the work that you're doing is essential to you and to your community. And because it saves people in a different way and it saves their mm-hmm. spirit and their soul and, uh, and it keeps them going every day. And I know that your music in particular has kept us going and been the reason that we've been able to keep going at certain times. And it's just like, Thank you. It's it's hard, uh, like, right now, and it feels like it's never going to end. Uh, and I think we're all just trying to, like, do what we can and what we're working on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you have Cast of 22, which is, is uh, something I've been listening to a lot lately. It's got a killer theme song. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Love it. A fucking amazing theme song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your intro to the podcast is just so... Like, I don't know. I don't think I've seen a podcast with a better intro than yours just because I really like it. Your podcast is like ASMR. Cast of 22 is like ASMR to me. It's like, like, I yeah. know what I need to like, like spiritually relax and I get that a lot. <laughs> like your voice is just so relaxing and like the, the way that you speak and is it's just, it's, it's, it's very beautiful and melodic. And uh, no, I was unique. Oh, sorry, I'm race. What? Hey. Uh, no, uh, no. I said the way that you uh, you speak on the show is uh, very beautiful and melodic, and it's very unique. And I just don't. I haven't personally listened to any other podcasts that have the um, the vibe of your podcast and kind of have the energy of it without sounding preachy or fake and yours sounds very honest and very genuine which i think makes it makes it pretty cool and and unique i really like the honesty of your show yeah. that's what, one of the things i've been appreciating is it's just like honesty from you without without uh judgment of yourself and of anyone listening it's self-awareness and self analysis but it's not like judgment or negativity it's just positivity and like looking to philosophically and spiritually find out who you are and where you belong. Um, and I love, I, I love that the first episode was about hiding. It really set the tone of just, just being honest. Thank you. That's, um, that's a really beautiful and very appreciated analysis. Um, from this end, I'm very happy that that's what you perceive because that's definitely what I was going for. And that's not what I feel like I'm doing most of the time. Did y'all listen to my podcast? The three of you? I listened to the first episode for sure. I might have listened to more oh. than that, but I definitely listened to the first episode. <laughs> I have not listened yet. What has it been like? What has it been like to have gotten to do your own show? I mean, is it something that you enjoy? Is it something that you've taken up as, you know, kind of a new challenge, um, you know, to create within? Yeah. Um, first of all, that was a joke about listening to my podcast, but sorry. I, I got, I got scared. 
um, put and on I blast. Just, <laughs> I, I am putting on blast. Um, <laughs> so, started the podcast because uh, Bart and Tyler had their own podcast. Honestly, like they I love podcasts podcast. and I've been consuming them for a long time. They have a great podcast and it's really funny. And um, just seeing that my friends can do it, I was like, wait, I could, I could do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. I like what you were saying um, about the podcast and I'd like to elaborate on that. Um, shit. <laughs> I think you, you're good. So, do you guys have like questions? I don't Are you popping them no. up? I was wondering, I, I personally was wondering how you, how you organize your thoughts uh, for this show. Because I find them, I, I find the way that you speak very open, very honest, but it doesn't seem like you're, you're uh, word vomiting or blurting everything out. It seems, uh, but not rehearsed in a very, very scripted way. Uh, it seems like a very controlled and beautiful message that flows together. So I was curious how you plan what you're going to say, how you're going to be honest, and how you're going to relate what you're saying, not just because because you talk about yourself a lot, but it doesn't seem like you're talking about yourself. It seems like you are talking about an example that's representing a lot of people, a lot of women, a lot of immigrants, and a lot of spiritual and philosophical human beings. So how do you organize what you're going to say for a show? and choose that subject matter. Emrys, you get me. Oh my god. Um well, so for the first season, I didn't <laughs> I didn't organize anything and I've been struggling to come back with the second one because I I wanted to be a little bit more concise and and I wanted to be um more valuable, you know, instead of me just like kind of word vomiting. Um and I've tried a lot of systems and honestly, like nothing works for me the way just kind of going at it and and uh, and kind of improvising. Um, and I speak from feelings. I speak from my heart. I'm very emotional, which is um, actually awesome and really useful if you're an artist to like really be in touch with your emotions. Actually, anybody, absolutely anybody, because... I'm 26, um, and I think I've been through actually a lot. And um, for better or worse, like experiences that are emotionally um, stressful and straining and challenging, they really help you grow in a way that, um, well, they give you the opportunity, rather. And so I... I kind of the reason I chose kind of the idea of the podcast and that kind of stuff is because I want it to be a resource for my community. And I'm really not clear still on who my community is, but I know the people that I represent. You know, I know that there may be immigrant people ladies young really i did it for like the young girls out there that they come to this country or wherever the fuck they are and they just they're really told that um here's what you do and here's how you do it and that's it and um i i i mean i am those people i am my audience so I guess maybe that's why it's helpful to connect with them when I speak from my personal experience. And I just happen to be a really hard-headed person that is always like, I don't like that. <laughs> no, I'm not down to do that. Or I don't like that rule. Why do I have to do that? Um, and it's always been so much fucking trouble for me. I've, I'm, I'm always getting myself, or I was always getting myself in trouble, like with my family. Um... You might not know this from my bubbly personality, but I'm really like more of a black sheep, to be honest. I'm I'm never really felt like I fit in anywhere. Um, I moved schools a lot when I was a kid, so that really kind of taught me how to speak to people and, and be friendly. But it kept me from connecting, you know, kind of like I was telling you guys earlier. It kept me from building like these solid connections and. Um, I think that I had to get in touch with my own 
moral compass really quickly. And I had to get in touch with um, what's right for me and who I am, my voice, like, um, what, what, how do I do right by me in this situation? And I think that is a skill that is not taught. And I would have loved to have some sort of like mentor. I had my mom, but you know, everybody's, everybody's human and flawed and, um, struggling. My mom was a single mom, a single immigrant mom for like a long time. So she didn't have all this time to unbox her own tra trauma and sort through it and then be like, here's the things I wish I'd done like this. Here's the, you know, so I think I learned from like watching uh, my previous generations and how how by not speaking up and by not saying I don't like that or I'm not down with that, how it affected their life and how it still shaped like what. I guess the interaction, because I really deal in relationships, I think. And so holding like your own in a relationship and holding your ground in a conversation and that kind of stuff. Those are things that are so easy to just give away. And so really the, the, um, the point of my podcast is for my own learning, as well as to share what I'm feeling, what I'm learning and I'm just hoping that my thoughts will reach somebody who might be in a situation where they need it. And they'll be like, you know what? I never had that thought. It was not available to me before. Beyonce says, you can't be what you can't see. And I love her. My motherfucking queen. Beyonce, Beyonce is, is everything. Everybody in this, in this group knows that I don't love anyone in this world. More than I love Beyonce. Yeah, that's true. I love it, you know? Do you even use Tidal, which is the ultimate love for Beyonce? I use Tidal. Yeah. I, 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 Tidal and Spotify now. But, um, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You say what? So, so it's very much like you can't be what you can't see. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. I, like, you, listen, I've, I've been through the fights, I've had the conversations. I have been called all kinds of like rude, all kinds of like selfish, all kinds of messed up. But honestly, it's just because I was born in a tradition that needs to change a little bit for people like me. And I'm not somebody that's just going to take it with their arms folded. And so honestly, I think people have that within themselves. They just have not heard that conversation they haven't heard the thought like how about you tell them no how about you tell them to fuck off they have not heard that and so I'm my purpose or my intention is to get those thoughts out there even if they're like really fucking wrong um I'm acting like I got this you know kind of figured out but it's really <laughs> it's such a learning process for me I'm very confused as I said before but um yeah that's my goal and that's what I'm working at every day and that's why I had to take such a step back during this quarantine and be like who am I talking to <laughs> and who am I doing this for and I I felt myself kind of turning into a more performative um speaker you know I I felt like my actions were were turning into um performative like for the likes and you know oh I was thinking like what should I talk about that you know somebody else would want to hear and I'm really glad that I got stopped in my tracks and basically like, I mean, kind of um, beaten down in a soul level because I really needed to, to um, remember where I'm coming from and who I am and why I'm doing this and, um, you know, do it for myself. I think at the end of the day, the most important thing about all my projects, uh, I don't think a lot of people are um, quite fond of admitting this, but the reason I do things is for myself because they make me happy and they make me feel like I'm being of service to my community. You know, or this is something that I'm passionate about. Um, so for me to create music or talk about things on my podcast that don't directly align with what the fuck I feel like talking about right now is a big no, no. And I noticed myself going that way. So 
Thank you, Jesus, for the break. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the way to do it, though. It's like if you really yeah. want to identify with somebody, you have to do it through yourself. You can't be somebody else to identify with somebody. Of course, yeah. And I recognize that also. And that's another reason why I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't like pretend to be some sort of like businesswoman. I'm, I've always been a fucking hustler, you know, but between Aladdin and Prince Ali, I'm still a street rat. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's nice to like say that. I mean, you know, and I'm Reese, what you were saying earlier about like, me and the scene and and the way I've impacted, like, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I feel lucky that these people let me in the door. Because um, <laughs> when I was first touring with Just Friends, I would get stopped at every single door by, like, whoever was manny at some fucking slouchy dude from God knows where. And they would stop me like I was trying to sneak in. And Sam loves to tell the story. He's like, yeah, so you think I fucking walked in here in my pajamas at 2 p.m. looking like shit to uh, bomb your little fucking venue? Like, you know, it was just rude and it really warm. And it affected the way that I was carrying myself. And and uh, it made me really defensive, I think, to be part of, of a scene that, I mean everyone's been so kind and so um supportive and people are like brian you're dope and like i love your singing you know the bad experiences really stick with you and so for me these men at the door that were stopping me and telling me like what are you doing here really got under my skin because it it pushed a button that was like you don't belong here you know and i already felt I felt my whole life like I've been trespassing, you know, the, my whole life I've been told, not my whole life, oh my fucking God, but <laughs> we moved to the U.S. That's when I was- a lot of immigrants do feel. You're not alone in that thought is that how many immigrants, especially in this country, feel. But that is a very good feeling. And like you said, you can't be what you can't see. And representation is so extremely important. And you can't be, you can't be or feel what isn't going on around you. Like you can't like society can't expect you to become and feel comfortable uh, where there aren't others that look like you. And when you go somewhere, like you have these experiences and you go there and you might get a lot of support, but there are those, there are still those negative experiences where you were seen as, as other and you were not seen as someone that was supposed to typically fit into that. And that made you feel bad and you can't, uh, you can't positively like feel good about showing up everywhere if everyone doesn't see you as uh, the type of person that's supposed to show up to that scene. And like that's something that all people, like not all people, but a lot of people feel uh, when they feel misrepresented. cutting off but I think I I got the gist of what you were saying absolutely um with the representation (laughs) so yeah definitely when we when I first started playing shows with just friends the audience was um white dudes (laughs) mostly and you know they might have been queer or whatever but it was mostly um white people and I was very 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 aware of that and Mm -hmm. um just the like the lack of color and the lack of uh, femininity in the crowd. And it's changed since. Uh, You talk about on your podcast that you are a proud uh, Mexican immigrant and you're also now a proud uh, U.S. citizen, which you are not always. So (laughs) we would really love to to hear about how uh, you became a U.S. citizen and what that struggle looks like for you and how that... uh, connected with with just friends and going on tour and coming to the band oh yeah so um it all started when brown was nine uh, my parents split up and so we we were doing the single mom thing for a little bit in mexico city and things were looking pretty dangerous i was you know a rebel, rebellious child Um, And so I was like, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. So I would leave 
the apartment. My mom was at work all day long and my brother was like a chicken. <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm going to go to the market and go look at the little turtles. So I would leave the house. That sounds house. pretty lit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was really like a, a really, really bad thing for a nine-year-old young girl to be walking in the Colonia Morelos, like, district in Mexico City, because where we lived was not a safe place. And um, it's kind of a miracle that I didn't get snatched. But, you know, we had that. And also my mom witnessed a... Um, she was coming home from work. She came home at, like... She got home around 11 or something at night. And so she um, saw a mugging right next to like the door of our building and she was like hey like leave that dude alone and the guy that was mugging was our neighbor and she recognized him and he recognized her and so she noticed that he was um kind of like keeping an eye on us after that and that was honestly the last straw for my mom we had applied she had been applying to um for us to come here legally up until then because my my grandma and my uncle have lived here for or previous to that they've been here i think like 10 years something like Damn. that um yeah so i don't really know them that well but um yeah so we were trying she was trying to just join her family basically and um we weren't getting the green light because you know they don't want like single mothers with two children coming into the country and so um she was like well it's not safe for my kids to be here or for me to be here and she and my uncle made the decision to cross us um illegally and it was a process we took one suitcase for the three of us and as I told you like I take a lot of stuff with me on tour because I I'm just somebody that really likes their stuff you know I like things and I like my sweaters and my whatever like Taurus moon if we're getting real but um <laughs> but you know and it was really I remember really being like oh you want me to leave like all my toys and all my stuff and and I didn't understand I was giving her a hard time about my dad because I missed him and um you know she left him because he was not a good dad or a good husband but um so anyway we took one suitcase we went to TJ, Tijuana, um, and we stayed at some, like, empty house. It was not furnished. It was just a house with some, you know, mattresses on the floor, and, like, a lot of people were there, and it was really weird. Um, and that's the first place where I saw American currency. <laughs> and I was, like, playing with, like, little dimes and stuff. It's so weird having a kid's perspective on it and, like, mm. But knowing, you know, what it was now, um, I, I did not comprehend really what was going on. And I was nine, like, who, who would? And then, um, so it turned out that we wouldn't be, we could not be crossed together. And you've heard about families being split up and whatever, but uh, my mom was advised to let my brother and I go together because children are easier to smuggle through, you know, and mm -hmm. adults are a lot harder. Um, and so they took us away from my mom after like a week and we went to a different home. We stayed overnight and then the next, I don't know when it was real early. It was still dark when I crossed the border, but, um, they ended up splitting me from my brother too. Um, because they said he was really nervous. He has Asperger's and he blinks a lot and stuff. So yeah, he's kind of a nervous guy. Um, and so, I mean, I just kind of did it because I was told like this is what you do now and I'm like oh, okay yeah here we go um but it's honestly like really miraculous that the three of us made it separately um and across safely I have well I had a friend whose mom uh died in the border she got deserted out in the desert and she died and she left um all her kids are citizens and she left the like eight month old baby and I was really sad. Um, the border is like not a good memory for me. <laughs> and um, yeah, we I grew up in South San Francisco. 
and, you know, did normal, like, young adult teen things. But behind, beneath everything, I always kind of felt very different from my friends because um, I knew that, well, you know, you're a kid. All you know is that your mom is telling you to be careful, be careful, be careful, and to hide. And my family became very fearful and very um, just like avoidant, oops, avoidant of of anything that could stir up trouble. And um, hmm, this always gets kind of gloomy, but it's not. It's not a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I get it. Um, but yeah, I think I lived my life as normally as I could. Um, and then when I was 17, that was my senior year, junior, senior year, there were years of reckoning for me because when you're applying for FAFSA and you're applying to colleges and all that stuff, I joined every single like academically um, unnecessary <laughs> program that I could. You know, if there was an honors class, I took that shit. If there was AP, I wanted to be in it. Leadership, I was part of that. I was in like um, cheerleading. I did color guard. I did, I was like the photography club president. All these things. I was super, super involved um, because I'm, I like to uh, win. <laughs> I'm really competitive really really ambitious just naturally and that's also why I'm so stubborn and like mm -mm. um and so when I was like 16 17 and we were applying for colleges suddenly I felt like I don't get to win anymore you know I don't even get the chance to compete anymore like once you leave high school you know you have your college that you want to go to and and people talk about like being nurses and and air force and all these things and for me what was waiting after high school was just this like unknown you know it's like a like nothing there mm-hmm. and that made me really depressed um i stopped trying in school obviously and um it wasn't that bad because my mom it was such a hail mary my mom met her husband they're still together now and through him we were able to get our citizenship and it was a really interesting feeling because if you go from feeling like there's nothing valuable about you and your life and whatever, and then suddenly all that's over and it's like, congrats, like you're not, you're like everybody else now, but you pay taxes and like all these, things. well, to be fair, um, undocumented immigrants pay taxes, but, uh, <laughs> I don't want to spread it, you know, yeah. <laughs> misconception. But um, it was a a really strange feeling. And that's why I think in college, I was like, wow, I have all these choices. Like, I can do whatever I want to do. And um, that was awesome. And I also had the, like, traditional family that was like, we put everything on the line for you. (laughs) The least you can do is be a fucking doctor or something. (laughs) Like the least you can do is take care of yourself. (laughs) Um, And that was really hard for me because I wanted to be a singer and I've known it since I was really, really young. Like I've just been a performer from day one. Hey dog. How you doing? Please come in. That's awesome from Mom Jeans. Oh, and shit. Shirt. Damn. <laughs> Out there fighting them, you know. Um, and so I think really, um, I don't know. I, I don't, I guess, fuck. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but it was just a really, um, it made me see that I could not waste my life the way that I had been. Um, I knew that I wasn't passionate about becoming a therapist or, or, you know, something like traditional roles or anything like that. That was never the life for me. And I saw, I just saw like a big ass dead end at the end of everything. I'm like, okay, that's such a predictable life. That's super, super boring. And, um, I loved singing. I was so attracted to music and I, I, um, 
you know, I played in bands and I still kept my major um, for a minute. And there was this point I had already transferred to um, a four year. I went to a junior college first and then transferred. I was like a year and a half away from my degree. And oh God, I'd never been that depressed in my whole life. I would wake up every day and be like, what's the fucking point? Like, you know, I definitely feel that. I did um, antidepressants for a little bit. And that show was fucking ugly. It was terrible. I felt so bad. And, And all my emotions were gone. I realized like a month in, I was like, Oh my God, I've been on autopilot for like the last month, you know, after it kicked in and shit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sad anymore, but I was like, I was going through the motions and I was numb. Yeah, I was so, so numb. And I was like, this is so weird because I'm, I'm a very emotional, very emotional person. Like that's my compass. You know, that's what tells me when something is good for me or when something is not good for me. And, um, you know, I got all past that and I realized that I was like if I want to do this music thing I gotta dedicate myself to it you know I have to bring it out from the shadows and I have to like claim it and be like this is who I am and this is what I'm doing and maybe some people can do it on the side maybe some people can do it as a side hustle and I'm not shaming that whatsoever that's honestly a much more steady way to do it and a lot more like reasonable but for me, I just had to drop like school because it was making me feel like shit because you can't do well in things that you don't care about. Um, and I had a conversation with my mom because I really needed her blessing, you know, because like, dude, I owe her like everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, I I told her, I was like, mom, I'm so unhappy and um, I really want to do be a musician and and um I feel like I'm missing my opportunity I feel like my life is not mine and and all these things and I did not expect her to support me really but I did it anyway and she changed my life that moment because she was like well you should stop wasting your time with school then but if you're gonna do music like you're gonna do it right and you're going to study and you're going to, oh, I'm getting emotional. But, <laughs> but yeah, that was such a turning point for me when I was able to like claim myself and be like, this is who I am. This is what I do. And, and like, maybe I'll die, you know, not getting to the level that I want to be, but I can't keep living this lie. I'm just like, I can't lie. Also, by the way, if you ever like ask me something and I don't want to tell you what it is. You're going to see it in my face. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, oh, 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 oh. and, then, and then just, there's no use. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and that was a turning point. That's where I joined those classes I told you about earlier. That's where I met my first band. And then um, I think like a year into that band and being, you know, it wasn't an immediate process and I wasn't like, I'm an out of my star now it was like it's like what do I do (laughs) it was very much the same thing but I had a different direction to my life and I think that's why when Sam called me and he was like hey we need some backups for um this album and I remember you saying and it's it was pretty good you know we were like mutual fans before we were enemies um and he was, it had been like a while and I was like, yeah, sure. Like whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I showed up, um, I think it was Ryan's house the first time I went and, um, I sang on it and I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just like, blah, 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 making like sounds. And, um, Sam was like, that was incredible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the way that he does. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, okay. <laughs> What song was and that on? Like, do more, do more. Yeah. And before long, I was on the whole album. Um, and then after that, I did not know that I was in the band until, um, <laughs> until like actually like a tour or maybe into the first tour is when I realized like, am I part of this band? <laughs> 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 and that's great. Um, 
and we've talked about it before he or we've talked about it since and he he was like I wasn't sure because we had that whole thing I wanted to just like test you out but I knew that I wanted you in the band and he was just making sure that I like fit with everybody and that he got to know me and all that stuff and Mm -hmm. um yeah the rest is history and god that's like i don't know even if just friends the band like stopped existing for some crazy freak reason like i know that these people have become my family and i'm just gonna know them for the rest of my life and honestly like that's that's what i needed you know that's what i wanted Mm -hmm. so life's good um ryan's brother is my boyfriend and we live together and we're super in love and um you know a sweet dog we have a beautiful dog and my son of a bunch of plants like my life is beautiful and it's um it's better than i could have expected for myself however many years back and i'm i'm working really hard to remind myself to like be grateful and i'm very spiritual too and i believe like there's a uh, trajectory in our lives and we we choose to walk on the path or to wait and lollygag and waste our time the path is always going to be there but I'm happy that I I decided to start walking it when I did because I mean I've had so much shit like so many challenges since but when I look back and I think about all the bad things that happened to me you know relationships um got myself in trouble like money problems or whatever um i i can't say that i regret a single thing because i'm so fulfilled in my life today and i'm so happy to be who i am and stand for what i do and i know that that wasn't always the case and so really when i when i think about like my podcast that's my service to the community singing is for me don't get it twisted like this is something that i will never stop doing because i love it so much and it makes my heart sing uh, <laughs> uh i didn't mean that <laughs> my heart sing um and also like i feel like um i have a mission to let people know that um i don't think of myself as like some sort of teacher or some sort of like truth bringer or anything like that i think of myself as like somebody who might spark you to um to decide you know to start walking the life that you were born to live as opposed to like lollygagging you know i'm, I'm that support that's like Stop wasting your time. Like, do it, do it, you know, do it. Mm -hmm. Take the leap. So that's really what my podcast is about. And that's what I'm about. (laughs) Big shoes. But, but yeah, it's a big uh, challenge. But I feel really honored. And um, I take it really, really seriously. I don't know if I'm arrogant for it or whatever, but I take it really, really seriously. You got, a, you got a crazy wow. story. That's incredible. Wow, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And it's really and it's really beautiful that just just in your story and everyone goes through things differently, but uh your story is very beautiful and the way that you describe it and the way you point out uh the injustices that are happening, uh, which there are many, and it's but you also do it in such a positive way where you show that you've learned so many lessons from it and tried to become a better human being through it. And, yes. uh, and I think that's very inspiring what you were able to cut, like where you are now, what you were able to come from and how you were able to get yourself there, you know, and I'm sure you had a little bit of support from people, but you really yeah. did that yourself. And that's a very impressive thing. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think it feels, I mean, for, for all of us, I feel like our lives feel like individual, um, just struggles or challenges or, or journeys, but, um, you know, it's all the people that, that, um, saw you and was like, I can give you something that you need. Like 
you know, Sam saw me and I was a fucking bitch. Like, <laughs> you know, I was like all of myself. I'm like, yeah, I'm a singer, whatever. Um, but he was able to see like past that. And, you know, my mom was like, you know, we have conversations about like, mom, um, you know, this, this culture that we live in was so oppressive and this and this. And she was like, yeah, I fucking know. Like, you think I raised you in the way that I did so that you would be a housewife, bitch? Like, she's like, I knew that you were going to do something crazy. <laughs> she said, I always knew you were going to find the hardest thing you could do and like, go after that um and it really I mean looking back like sure my mom used um or my mom acted in an unconscious way sometimes that came from the way her parents raised her and generations and generations and I think that's a point of reckoning for a lot of people is you think about how your parents fucked you <laughs> Um, but you don't think about how they got fucked too. And so everybody's just always trying to do like better. And, and it's just, eh, I don't know what I'm saying, but it's whoever's listening, you're going to fucking find yourself there and you're going to be like, Oh shit, bro, was right. And I'll be like, it's, <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, it's important to acknowledge like all the support. Definitely. There's, I still feel somewhat helpless. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm always like, what the fuck would I do without this band? And like, what would I do without my family and, and without my boyfriend, without my dog, you know? But um, we all have it in ourselves. It's We have helpers and we have support and that's essential. Like we can't do it without our communities. But um, also, on as well as that... Um, nobody's going to move you forward more than yourself and it's going to keep you from moving forward more than yourself. And at the end of the day, if you don't have everybody or if you don't have anybody at, at all, you can still be successful and you can still live a life that you are proud of and that you're happy to be in. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. I think, wow. That's powerful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is something we could talk about just like all day long, you know, but. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Well, I'm trying to get season two out and trying to figure out what that's going to be like. So um, Mm -hmm. hopefully it has some insightful moments. I'm trying to make it a little more lighthearted, too. I'm trying to just get a um, I'm going to start making playlists because I'm big about the moods and talk about those. I don't know. I'm just trying to find ways to like keep the fun going for me, but also to make it a little more valuable for like listeners and mm-hmm. people that put their trust in me and stuff. I'm very grateful. I don't get it, but I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I think that's a, I think that's a pretty great place to, to maybe end it. I, I, we, we could, we could talk about it. We it's a good time. What? He said it's a good segue. No, I said it's a really good high note. To yeah. end. Oh, it's, very, it's true. It's a very good high note, and we and you're an extremely uh, wise, self-aware, uh, insightful person. That I feel like we could continue having conversations for a very long time. And if you ever want to come on again, you're welcome to come back anytime. Of uh, but we're very, <laughs> we're very grateful yeah. that you came today, and uh, we just want to like. Can we take the time to point out how people can get to know you better, where they can find you? I know that you offer like a lot of really amazing. What? Well, like where where they can find her, like podcast, and not like physically yeah. where they can find yeah. her, like address, house, but, like, postal, yeah. Yeah. Not, PO box. Give us your address. We will cut it out. <laughs> uh, but I know that you give a lot. You give a lot of your Patreon, and there's Casa Twenty Two. There's your Instagram. Yes, yes. So my Instagram, let's just look. Um, my Instagram is Big Bad Brond. Pretty much just operate from there. Um, my podcast called Casa Twenty Two. People can find it on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. As far as I know. <laughs> and yeah, my- you can. I checked. I checked that today. Thank you. <laughs> and my. Patreon is patreon.com slash just casa22, one word, and um, 
yeah, I really appreciate everybody that has supported me on Patreon. I just shout them out. Because these people, I can't believe it. Like, you know, there's a lot of imposter syndrome that comes with, like, the way that, I, that I'm aware of and I'm really um, working with it. But it's hard, man. So able to support me is difficult, you know, especially financially because I you know, as an immigrant, like money's a big, big thing. Um, and I find it kind of difficult to be like, Hey people, like give me your money and I'll sing for you. Cause that seems like, like you said earlier, like such a non-essential role, <laughs> but these people have shown out and they showed up and they, uh, Oh my gosh. They really like keep me going and they, they're so sweet and supportive and um, they really like help me out when I'm like, bronze sucks. And they're like, no. <laughs> so, really appreciate them. And anybody that can come through is very helpful. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks. Bron, so I just, I, I just wanted to say, uh, I, I think I really, we all really appreciate you talking about your giving your perspective and to to talk about your personal journey in the manner that you did i think it's not just inspirational but it's informational and can give a lot of credence to the difficulties that people all over the country all over the world face and also managing to make something great out of all of that to to still manage to take that and to be able to positively affect the world uh at the end of the day um because you have inspired a ton of people i think um and i think you have changed a lot about you know like you said about the audience that you see at your shows and how it's changed over time because of people brave enough like you to do the things that you do and put yourself out there and show people that uh, anybody can be in these roles and anybody can do these things. Um, so I just really appreciate you taking the time to talk about that. And I think it's now more important than ever um, for people to be sharing those kinds of stories and to be talking about that. Thank you. I'm really, I'm really grateful for you guys to have me on here. This is my first interview by the way really that's yeah. that's criminal that should have happened a long time ago yeah i was like hello <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you did awesome was, and thanks so much this is like amazing. Thank, thank you so much thank you guys i'm glad this was my interview though because you know and i'm glad that i got to <laughs> same same for sure so yeah that's awesome and, and I also just wanted to uh, say a thank you for just uh, just making my like I, I I should say night, but just like my entire life by uh, uh, shouting us out uh, at the show when and singing my favorite song. I mean, I'm yeah. sure you're gonna sing it tonight, but it just meant a lot. And just just to have you like say that and know that you were thinking of us and you did such a beautiful job and I started tearing up and it was yeah, amazing. So, I also started uh, tearing up and yeah, we were, we were in the pit. We were for, for sure to be here. Uh, it was so beautiful and it meant so much. And people actually came up afterwards and they were like, uh, you know, they, they pointed us out and they thought how lovely that dedication was and uh, to us and to your friend, Julia. And uh, thank you. Thank you guys. Actually, I didn't tell you, but you guys being at the show made me like so much more comfortable. Really? That's yeah, awesome. I sat there and I was like, oh, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, well, I'm, I'm crying. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm crying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my entire Discord screen is oh black. Oh my God. <laughs> like, is that your first? <laughs> actually, yeah, I know. Actually, on some real, we just, we really fuck with your music and everything you're doing professionally, but who you are. And just having you on the show now and getting to learn more about you and just see the way that you speak and the way that you deal with things just, and process things is so much different than other people. I fuck with you so much. And like, we are, we are your friends and we are here for you. If you need anything, if you 
come near, like come anywhere near where we live within like a five hour radius. We will be there, yeah, be there for you in the front row, standing you and screaming the entire time. Uh, and we're always here for you. Like if you want us to help us promote anything, like we're here. And um, we appreciate how cool you and everyone else has been. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really grateful for you guys. I feel like we're two big groups of lovers that just like met and now we are a bigger group of lovers we're a network sure. of lovers sure. that's awesome <laughs> that's lovers. just please 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 extend our uh good graces to the rest of the group who's taking refuge in your house yeah. since this is all started we have uh, like we've been thinking about you guys and the impact this is this must have all had on you guys and our thoughts have been with you and I hope that everyone's staying safe. I hope that everyone's trying to make the best of it. We wish you the best of luck in the demonstrations you're going to take part in. Uh, and uh, we will be right there with you guys in spirit when we are at our respective uh, <laughs> protests uh, this week as well. Hell yeah. So, hell yeah. Hell, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think we wasted enough of your time for today. Jody, y'all. <laughs> so. Well, <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> we love you too. Thank you so much, Ron. Thank you. Have a good day. Yeah, have a good protest. I'll do it. I'll know what's going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>